San Diego-based Arcturus Therapeutics is planning a human clinical trial this summer for their potential offering. The company says a relatively small amount of the compound could vaccinate millions of people. I'm excited to say Joseph Payne is the president and CEO of Arcturus Therapeutics, and he joins us now. Joseph, fantastic to have you on the show. There's something very specific about the vaccine that you are developing, and I need you to explain why such a small dose could potentially be so potent. Uh, absolutely, uh, Julia, and by the way, it's good to be with you. Thank you. Uh, our, vaccine, our vaccine is a, a, a messenger RNA vaccine which puts us into a special subgroup of the, the many vaccines that uh, the global scientific community are, are pursuing. But uh, at Arcturus, we have a special type of messenger RNA vaccine called self-replicating mRNA. So it means that once this messenger RNA molecule is injected, that it not only makes a, a small amount of the desired antigen or the desired uh, spike protein, but it continues to do so so uh, because of this technology, it means we can lower the dose substantially. And this is very important, as you can understand. And it's described as a single shot solution, too. Yes, yes. You, you know, as we've engaged many, many countries around the world, you can understand the, the, the importance of the logistical distribution of the vaccine as well. And a single shot vaccine versus a shot plus booster or a two or three shot vaccine over months uh, can be very challenging. So uh, it, 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 we check all the boxes with this vaccine. Not only is it a potential single shot and a very low dose, but you combine that with the ease of manufacturing and feasibility of manufacturing this vaccine. Uh, it means that we can make uh, a significant impact in, in millions of people. I mean, just to give people a sense as well, one kilogram could equate to 500 million doses. So to your point, whether you're talking about developed economies or perhaps more importantly, developing economies. These aspects of the science here are so critical. I mentioned in the introduction, human trials in the summer. Why wait so long? Because I know you've done animal trials already and clearly the whole world is desperately hoping that, that we can accelerate this science as quickly as possible. You know, absolutely. Our animal trials were very successful. We had 100% zero conversion in the animals we tested at uh, very, very low doses, so highly encouraging. Uh, we're cautiously excited about the data and we need to get this into human beings as soon as possible. Uh, we're engaged in manufacturing the vaccine as we speak and uh, we aim to ship that uh, for in, in June. And then uh, as soon as possible thereafter, we can initiate the trial. So if we can replicate the results that we just saw in animals, this would be a very big deal. And, and we're excited to live into that potential. Give us a sense of timing then, in, including the time it takes to do the human trials, to analyze the data, to decide, get approval, perhaps to really ramp up uh, the manufacturing of this. When could we see it on the market and being used more widely? Well, uh, Julia, that's a great question. It's a fair question. People always want to know when we can get this, you know, the publicly distributed. So uh, it's important to, well, after after a human being would be uh, injected, we'd have to measure the antibody titers within a period of time. But because, the, again, this is a single shot vaccine, it won't take a long time to evaluate efficacy and safety in the clinic. Uh, so, uh, you know, within 30 days after we initiate uh, clinical trials will have some uh, very early data to share and hope we'll start to see some of the uh, the data that we expect and that and, and to what degree it'll match what we've seen in animals and that doesn't take very long uh, measuring antibodies is an easy thing um, and and it's not just antibodies we have to make sure it's the correct antibodies the neutralizing antibodies the the, the antibodies that protect or or protect the individual from, from the COVID-19 virus itself. Uh, so this does not take a very long time. Um, our first trial is in 76 people. That's not a large number. We are including the elderly, and we hope to get a very clear idea of the dose right away. Once we lock in the dose and confirm that it is a very low single-shot vaccine, 
then we just engage in manufacturing. And thankfully, our process is very scalable. We've engaged Catalent recently and did a press release on that. Uh, they're one of the world's largest, most uh, 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 efficient manufacturers, and hmm. they will help us in the ability to get hundreds of millions of doses annually uh, is what we're hoping to live into with them. Um, and so it, I, I, I believe I addressed your question, though. It, it, it will take, you know, a, approximately 30 days after initiating uh, the trial to start to see, uh, or, you know, early data and the very first people that, that are injected with our vaccine. I was just thinking there, because the missing piece of this is that it was the Singaporeans that came to you in January and said, look, we like what you're doing. We want you to scale up. They gave you investment. And if you succeed, the Singaporean population get the first batch of doses. But when we're talking about hundreds of millions potentially of manufacturing, um, that's fine because it's actually a relatively small country. Are you free to sign manufacturing deals with the like of likes of Pfizer, Merck potentially here in the United States that have got real manufacturing capacity because the global population clearly is billions. Yes, absolutely. A lot of good thoughts there. The Singapore government and Duke NUS Medical School in Singapore approached us in January of this year and we've made great progress with them. And you're right, Singapore is a small country. There's only about five or six million people in that country. And so we can, uh, we're definitely looking to make a, a more uh, a more impact outside of Singapore uh, with this vaccine. Uh, and and with respect to partnerships, we're, we're engaged in discussions with multiple government entities here and abroad, and also strategic partnerships and in, in, in some of the largest uh, pharmaceutical companies in the world. And we have to evaluate all of these opportunities. Uh, there's fantastic foundations as well that are looking to help the developing countries and we're in conversations with them as you can appreciate and uh, you take this all together we're going to learn to you and i are going to learn together you know the you know which you know which uh, uh partnerships are going to help us uh, mm. globally distribute this, this 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 vaccine but in the initial phase this is an important distinction in 2020 we don't the, the, purchaser, the purchasers of the vaccines are countries. Uh, this is an unusual commercial or business model. Our, our customers are few, and, and you, have, you have a small number of countries that can afford to stockpile a vaccine and initiate this process early. And, and the distributors are gonna be the military, for example. So countries are the buyers and the military are the distributors. And that's an unusual model, and that's what we're heading into for this year. But next year, or in 2022, having a partnership with a, a global distributor in a more traditional sense is more likely at that time. But in terms of near right now, uh, you know, we, we need to address the needs of, of countries that are that want to gain access and rights mm -hmm. to our vaccine as soon as possible. Help us with funding uh, the stockpiling initiatives for these countries. And then we can provide a very simple single shot vaccine that is readily distributed and easily, you know, logistically um, easy to, dis to distribute for, for, the, for these relative countries. And yeah. so that's and what it, we're headed to in the near term, it makes sense. And at rel relatively lower cost, I, yes. I mean, you've just pointed out how many well, barriers are being broken here in terms of innovation, speed, business model, who's buying, who's distributing. Yeah. Joseph, keep in touch, please, because we'd love to check back in with you and, uh, and with your progress. Thank you for all your work and for your team's work too. Joseph Payne there, great to, uh, great to chat to you and hear Thank what you're you doing. Julia. Thank you, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Appreciate it.